This is part one of five, looking at chapter four, general features of cells. In our 12 principles of biology, I just have the first eight listed here. So these are those eight characteristics of living things. In this chapter, we're gonna be focusing on the first three characteristics. So cells are the most basic unit of life. Organisms need to get and use energy in order to live. And then number three, living things can interact with their environment. This chapter really focuses on that first characteristic that living things are made up of cells. So we're gonna review the cell theory up here. And I talked about this in the very, very first chapter. So just to remind you, in the cell theory, it has three things. So it states all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Cells are that smallest, most basic unit of life, and that new cells can only come from pre-existing cells by some type of cell division. Remember, we're going to talk about cell division in future chapters, but we're going to look at mitosis and meiosis. Cells were first discovered in 1665 by a guy named Robert Hooke. He observed dead plant cells in a cork, and it's actually shown to the right. He drew that picture showing these different cells in the plants. The first living cells were observed in 1674, so about nine years later by Antoine von Leeuwenhoek. And these two guys Besides looking at cells, they're also credited with coming up with microscopes in order to actually see the cells. And just for some fun facts, human cells, so in one human body we have approximately 10 to 100 trillion cells in our human body. And it's really hard to estimate how many cells each individual has, so it's really just a guesstimate for that number. Um, and every second, as an adult human, you lose between 200,000 to 3 million cells per second. And a lot of that is skin cells that are coming off, so cells have to constantly be replacing themselves. And final fun fact, so atoms in your body go through complete turnover about once every seven years. So this doesn't happen, you know, you turn seven, all your atoms turn over. But just over those seven years, all of your carbon and hydrogen atoms, they're brand new. And that comes from the food you eat. Um, so you have to get energy from that. You get atoms and elements from the food as well. So I mentioned that cells were discovered in the 1600s by Robert Hooke and Leeuwenhoek. And those two guys are also credited with coming up with some of the really primitive microscopes. So in order to actually see cells, we have to use different types of microscopes. And I'm gonna go through the different types. In lab, we either have or will use microscopes in lab. So you'll learn about them as well during lab. So a microscopy, you need a microscope, which is just a magnification tool and this tool enables researchers and scientists and students to look and study the structure and function of cells. And a lot of microscopes, you can actually take an image from the microscope, and it's called, or the image is called a micrograph. Um, we do have some, or we have one microscope that has a digital camera on it. Um, so hopefully in lab we'll be able to use that. You can take home a picture of your own cheek cell if you'd like. In your microscope, there's three things that are really important to get a good image of whatever you're looking at. So microscopes, they need a magnification. This is just the ratio between the size of an image produced by the microscope and the actual size of the image. So basically, you need a microscope that's going to make things look bigger. Another characteristic of a good microscope is the resolution, which is how clear the image is going to appear. 
And technically, it's the ability to observe two adjacent objects as distinct from one another. And I'll show you examples of what resolution is. Then the third characteristic for a microscope is contrast. And this is how different one structure looks from another. So in our microscopes, we can adjust the contrast a little bit using the light. But a lot of times, we're going to be adding some type of dye or stain to whatever you're looking at to give it some color. So resolution and magnification, just to show you exactly what it is. So resolution, you can think of it as like the pixels on your camera. So the more pixels you have, the higher the resolution or the clearer the image is going to be. So up at the top we have two images. On the left, um, this kid's eye is kind of blurry, so it has low resolution. If we increase the resolution, you see more detail in the image. Whereas if you compare that to magnification, magnification is just making something bigger, so enlarging the image. Usually when you magnify, your resolution goes down, your image becomes more blurry. So you need a microscope that can magnify an image and create higher resolution at the same time. So those are two things that we're going to look at on our microscopes in lab, is our magnification and resolution. Now that we've gone over the different properties of a good microscope, we can look at the different types of microscopes. One type of microscope is a light microscope. These are microscopes you're going to be using in lab. They use light for illumination to help you see the specimen you're looking at. These light microscopes, they have pretty good resolution. It's about 0.2 micrometers. Um, it depends on what magnification you're at, but you can get up to 0.2 for your resolution. So you can see a lot of detail using these light microscopes. But when you get to really tiny things like viruses or proteins, you're probably going to want to use the other type of microscope called an electron microscope. Electron microscopes, instead of light, they use electrons to view the image. And electrons, if you remember, are very, very tiny. And they're those subatomic particles that have that negative charge in them. So these really tiny electrons, we can bounce them off an image and you get very high resolution. So two nanometers, which is very, very tiny. This is showing a compound light microscope that we'll use in lab. I'm not going to go through all of the parts on it because we'll do that in lab. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what a light microscope is going to look like. And these light microscopes, if you just use a standard light microscope, there's an image here. We have red blood cells, and then those little purple circles are bacteria cells on the image. Um, standard light microscopes usually have to add some type of dye or stain or look at things that are already colored. Another type of light microscope is a phase contrast. Phase contrast, they bend the light a little bit, and that causes things to look darker and lighter. So phase contrast light microscopes, they increase contrast just by bending light. Another type of light microscope is a fluorescent microscope. Instead of adding like a blue or red dye, you're going to add a dye that fluoresces. And then the microscope's going to pick up that fluorescent glow, and you'll get an image like the one shown on this slide. For the electron microscopes, there's two types that we're going to look at. So transmission electron microscopes, or they're called TEMs, they give you an image of what's inside of a cell. So the electrons actually go through the image, they're transmitted through your specimen, so you get this flat looking internal structure of what you're looking at. On the other hand, the scanning electron microscope, or SEMs, they scan the outside of the cell, so you actually get a 3D image produced. And a lot of times to that 3D image they add false coloring to make it look a little bit better. 
So the two images here, we have an egg cell, which is the big circle, and then it's being fertilized by a sperm cell. The transmission electron picture is on the left, so you can see it's a flat image. You get a picture of what's inside of the cell. The scanning electron microscope picture is on the right, so you can see kind of that 3D shape with the false coloring, and you can see that see the sperm cell on the outside of the egg.